On this show, you'll find inspiration, motivation, and advice from experts, as well as valuable tips on how to get started or improve your business. Let's dive into how you can begin and grow your wisdom business. Inspiring others looks different for everyone. How will you inspire? Welcome to the Wise Dome Podcast, and today we're chatting with Harmony Robertson Stagg. And I can't believe we've got you on today because I'm so excited. I actually want to learn a lot about what Vedic wisdom is, <laughs> to be honest. So, welcome to the Wise Dome Podcast, Harmony. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, tell us about your story to get to where you are today. Sure. So. I, my background is actually a clinical registered nurse. So I started in the Western allopathic um, medicine side of things. And through my own personal health struggles with running um, multiple businesses as I was working as a nurse and raising my twin sons, mm-hmm. I end up completely burnt out with hormonal imbalances, gut issues, and anxiety. <laughs> so, you know. No, <laughs> yeah, when we overload ourselves. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't get the answers from or the support really from allopathic medicine and not to say that they didn't try, mm-hmm. but it just wasn't there. And I did try some other alternative therapies and it wasn't until I turned to Ayurveda where I really, truly got the results I needed from a really holistic standpoint, like mind, body. It was it was just so transformational. It's really hard to explain and put it all into words, but it became part of me. And I, I already knew about Ayurveda. I'm a yoga teacher as well. So I was also teaching yoga and Pilates all over town. Um, and so, but when I really, really, really embodied and learned more and more about this beautiful medicine, it was so transformational that I was like, this is it. Like, this is my calling. I I've never felt so on point with my purpose and my dharmic path. And I was like, I need to help others and I need to do it in a way that's really unique to me and infuse my medical allopathic Western wisdom with Mm. this ancient science and Mm. birth something truly unique that can really bridge that gap between the two. Yeah. And that's really good, isn't it? Because you, you've you literally come from two sides, like mm-hmm. polar spectrum, like that complete opposites. Well, not opposites. They're all doing the same thing. But, you know, like you said, yeah, no, it's it great is. to be able to blend them into something that, you know, you can really understand. And you have a better opinion, I guess we should say, a, you know, educated opinion when it comes to understanding the different sides and the whys and the don'ts and the do's and stuff like that, which is great. So how did you actually, obviously from your own experience, which a lot of us go through when we start going into this, you know, world of sharing our knowledge, yeah. how did that transition into actually coaching and, and moving into the world of sharing your wisdom with others? Yeah, sure. So I obviously then became an Ayurveda women's health practitioner. So I run, I still run my own women's health clinic and see yep. one-to-one clients. Yep. Um, and through doing that, I saw the biggest transformations wasn't from always like the herbs that I was prescribing mm. um, or the, you know, uh, therapies that I could do as a practitioner, but it was actually from the dietary and lifestyle advice and the Ayurvedic psychology aspects was mm. some of the biggest life transforming um, aspects of that client's journey. And yeah. I knew that there are so many more people out there that were passionate about helping people that could offer this type of service that would be so impactful for their clients and also for them because they are then stepping into a fulfilling career. Um, a lot of the women that I do have in my Ayurveda Alchemist program, they come from already a health background and they just wanted more. They wanted to be able to offer bigger, faster, better results and longer lasting results, I think is the, is the main thing. So then I decided, you know, I need to share this wisdom wider Mm -hmm. and help others share this wisdom because like I said it has been so impactful I saw it for myself and I saw it for my clients and I thought I would just love 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 to like I love talking about it love teaching it (laughs) um and it sort of just started from there and I was like right if I'm going to do this I'm going to go all in I'm going to do it properly I'm going to get my course accredited and I'm going to like create a really you know 
proper functional certificate to certify people as Ayurveda holistic health coaches. And I have a um, special specialization in women's health. So I also infuse a lot of women's health education Mm -hmm. in the program as well. So from both Western and Ayurvedic perspective, as well as going a little bit more even spiritual in the way that, you know, the other week I taught my students about the seven Vedic goddesses and how to really embody that energy. And that's more about how they can step into their own light as business owners. Right. So it's, it's that's sort of that mindset. Thing. So explain to us, anyone out there, and me <laughs> included in there, what the definition is exactly of what it Ayurveda? is. Ayurveda? Yep. Yep. Yeah, sure. So Ayurveda is actually a Sanskrit word, just like namaste, om, they're all Sanskrit words. Yeah, yeah. Ayurveda, it, the first part of the word Aya means life and Veda is the science knowledge of. So it translates to the science of life or the science of life and longevity. And it is all, Ayurveda is an an ancient health science. It's a medicine that comes from originally from India more than 5,000 years ago. They, the science itself was written down in the Vedas. So that Veda part of the word and they're the ancient texts where all of this information comes from. Right. Obviously, 5,000 years ago, they didn't have paper, pen, and printers, so it was written actually on palm leaves until finally it was all transcribed and it was also yeah. handed down through the oral route for many, many years. Yeah. So it has been tried and tested for so many years. Ayurveda draws its insights from nature, and we as humans, we're part of nature, but we yeah. have really excluded or distance ourselves over time in our modern world and it's all about bringing our mind and body back into balance with our natural circadian rhythms and the rhythms of nature right wow Wow. yeah Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) love it love it love it so my next question and it's it's going to sound like a boring one but it it has meaning to it (laughs) when you decided to go into this realm of sharing and you decided to certify your courses because some people might you know just want to start a course and they think oh do I actually have to certify my course did you have to certify for me it was a personal choice and I feel like in the health and wellness space there is so much Mm. stuff out there and I'm going to be very uh, mindful of how I articulate this (laughs) but it's so much stuff out there that hasn't got uh knowledge evidence backing behind it and doesn't yeah. it isn't a regulated industry regulated, the coaching yeah. industry yeah. and yeah. I wanted my part yeah. in that industry to be as regulated as I could be yeah. and for me that meant having a third party insurance company a third party um mm-hmm course company overlooking my program yeah. and saying yes you are providing enough education you are providing the right type of education the amount of hours and the assessments in your course yeah. um, help to deem that these are safe competent coaches and practitioners that come through your program not just from me saying that but from a third party who has nothing to do with me deeming that so yeah yeah No, that's really good and I appreciate that answer because, you know, some of our listeners out there might be thinking of doing, you know, following a a similar path and a better understanding of the whys to certifying is, yeah, that that answer is very helpful. (laughs) And is there any particular moment where you, well, not so necessarily the moment because I'm sure there's many, but going through the process of actually delivering your wisdom across to your members, was there any times where you thought, okay, I've got to adjust this based on feedback? Did you ask? specifically for feedback did you beta your courses you know what process did you take as you were sort of growing yeah absolutely it is constantly evolving (laughs) it is and in my eyes it's just getting better and better and better Um, but I I did do a beta round and that and they knew they were on the beta round I explained to them this is like the very first time this is offered but I already had so many excited people that wanted to come in and learn Ayurveda and share the wisdom so I had a really good beat around amazing students Mm -hmm. and once you join the Ayurveda Alchemist program you're an alchemist for life so they're still in my community they're still supporting the other students going through the program and I mean one of the ladies is even working for me as my student success mentor now Um, so it was really wonderful it was however a six-month course it is now a 12-month course and I ran it 
the net following year or six months as well. Mm-hmm. And what I found is it just wasn't quite enough time for them to really embody their practice. Yeah. And that was okay because, like I said, you're an alchemist for life. So we're mm-hmm. still in a very supportive Facebook community. They're still allowed to access the live teachings right. for as long as they ever want, except for they only got six months or they got 12 months access to the portal still. So that was yeah. fine. Yeah. But the way that I changed it is I was actually rocking up and teaching and lecturing. So each year mm. I was lecturing the same content for each yeah. of the modules and it was cohort style. Right. This year I've actually changed all that because all of those modules are pre-recorded. So yep. now you can join the program at any time. You can mm-hmm. access the educational modules, but the calls are now different. They're Ayurvedic embodiment calls. So you can go deeper in the the science and the knowledge by coming and asking your questions or we can go deeper on those subjects. And that's why I said like the other day we talked about the Vedic goddesses and how to embody the energy because they're already learning all of the practical aspects of Ayurveda and now we can have a lot of fun with it by bringing in new aspects. I also have guest expert lectures come in and teach. So next week we have a Kundalini teacher coming in to talk about energy medicine. I have a Panchakarma teacher. I have um, Ayurveda herbalist coming in so the calls are yeah not as structured and Mm. it gives them a year's worth of accessing them in the portal still so they get all of that in the education portal but lifetime access if they want to rock up to any live calls yeah so they're like you know coaching sessions you know table sessions sort of thing yeah that's Mm -hmm. really really good and I guess it just keeps that monotony out of it doesn't it because it's just you know sometimes they're in there they're just learning information but introducing little new aspects just gives it a bit more life, doesn't it, sometimes for some people? Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, it's just I think what was not surprising but, for a better word, something that I really loved about it that I didn't expect I would love so much was the relationships that have been built and the community of women. Like it Mm. is a real tribe of beautiful soulful women who are all connecting and just making great friends from not knowing each other to becoming really really close so I really love that aspect of it no that's really good that's and I you know when it comes to building a community you want your community to engage with each other as well don't you because Mm -hmm. that's the the purpose of it all isn't it sharing ideas and just interactions yeah and just being each other's cheerleaders, like I had a one of the girls on um, in my program put a po- uh, post up in the group last night and she's like, oh, my God, like I just followed the sales call sort of, you know, outline and script that Harmony's provided and because I do business coaching within the program as well. And mm. she goes, and it was so amazing and I signed my client to my program and then all the girls jumping in you're so awesome. That's so great. Like, you know, you've just got that support and the cheerleaders. So you're really Mm. celebrating your wins and, you know, business can be tough. So those times you're also supported through those, which is beautiful. And that's a good segue into the next question, which is what's, you know, I know we have many challenges in our world of, you know, running a business and so forth, but what would you say is the biggest challenge that you've come across thus far? The biggest challenge for me personally Mm. Yeah. So for me personally, I think it's something we all struggle with. And at this, okay, so there's two different things I want to share. So at the start of my business was definitely boundaries. So not setting boundaries with myself, with my work hours, with my clients. Mm. I mean, these days we can be messaged on Instagram. If they don't get through there, they're on our Facebook. If they don't get through there, they're on our emails. If they don't get through there, find our phone number. Like, you know, (laughs) there's just so many ways to be contacted and it can be really overwhelming. And if you have clients, it's the same thing like putting in contact hours and with yourself putting in your work hours so you're not Mm. burning yourself out so that's one and then the other thing that sort of leads into that is around time like we're all busy you know and people sometimes it's not an excuse but can also use it in this excuse so for instance you do need to be organized and structured and committed and you your why you really need to build a relationship with that because that's what's going to help you get through those time blocks so for me like yeah running a business I'll still working as a nurse you know um up until last year like I still I still am working but very casually I was in an actual um, permanent job and I, you know, have family, I'm studying a master's degree. Like there's so many different things. I'm running 
my clinic as well as my education program. We've all got a lot of things going on, but it's like how can we manage that so that we can still, you know, move our business forward? And I think that was one of the trickiest things is trying to do all the things as opposed to having a really smart sales system and a really smart way of doing things. Yeah, it's it's a whole lesson in efficiency, isn't it? It's just you've got to, and I actually put a post up the other day about juggling life because this Mm. past week my little one's been sick and it's like, I've had to postpone so many things, but you know, that's that's just how life is. And this is, you know, obviously, you know, when we start a business such as sharing our knowledge online or even, you know, face to face, whatever it is, starting a business in general, we're doing it maybe we all have different whys, but a lot of the time, majority it's for freedom mm-hmm. and that freedom of choice of being able to say, Yep, I've got to stop today or whatever. So yeah, you know, but it's it's a challenge, isn't it? Just balancing your mm-hmm time management it's always you can get drawn back again sometimes every now and then and how have you personally grown in the way that you know you share your wisdom my gosh like I I say to my students often like becoming an entrepreneur it Mm. shows you all of your insecurities it shows everything like it is the biggest personal development journey (laughs) and then throw Ayurveda onto that like you've seen so many parts of you so the way that I have grown personally has just been by I guess getting some knockbacks along the way like learning Mm. to not take things personally not the no's and the way that I've grown in the way that I share my wisdom Mm. I would say um would be more self-confidence in myself like I think we can all go into that imposter syndrome and it's like Mm. oh I can't believe I'm doing this like who am I type thing I'm like what (laughs) and it's like no, hang on it. You do. You have so much innate wisdom to share. And this is also your passion. And I, I find if you really are walking on that dharmic path and you're aligning with where you're meant to be in life, it will just come naturally. And you're going to attract those people that need to hear it and want to hear it. And so just really trusting in yourself and trusting in your process, as long as you're going into that process with integrity and in a really ethical way, then you are going to create great impact in other people's lives. And you've just got to trust that about yourself. You do trust, trust Mm. yourself. That's right. Mm. And, you know, you might hear crickets at the start. Yes. You know, but that's it. You, you, it's one thing I remember I'm um, having a conversation with someone about was, you know, sometimes people post something and then they're sitting there waiting to see what the responses are and yeah. you won't hear anything for a few days, maybe even a couple of weeks, but you don't realise not everyone is acknowledging things that they see online, but exactly. you never know how many times your name is being mentioned offline. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, exactly. you know, it, it just, it builds up over time. It builds up. You've just got to be consistent though, don't you? You have to be consistent. hundred percent. And that comes back to that sort of time management with your business. It's mm-hmm. really about that so that you can be consistent. Yeah. And, and if so, you don't get the likes, you know, you don't get them, still be okay. consistent. Still it, doesn't show mean, up. It, it doesn't mean anything against you or anything like that. It just means it hasn't come across someone because these bloody algorithms keep changing all the time. <laughs> Exactly. And I feel like we're also, uh, we're so numb to it now. Like uh, the like finger has stopped tapping (laughs) so much. We've got RSI from doing too many taps over the years. So now it's like you do scroll and read a bit more without engaging because, yeah, sometimes you're just over it. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. It's like how many times can I like these things? (laughs) Yeah. No, but, yeah. So anyone who's thinking of, you know, starting a business in this field, especially is what you've done. You obviously have that background as a, you know, nurse and so forth. But anyone who might not have come from that background, do you have any suggestions for them who might be thinking of starting a business like this? Yeah. So starting a program, like an educational program. Well, I think an educational program, no matter what business you're in, if you're serving even one-to-one clients, it is such a wonderful supplementary to your your existing work and you can wind down the amount of times that you have to see people whilst creating greater impact. So the Ayurveda Alchemist is my certification program, but I still have a program for my hormone clients as well. Yeah. So they they will come to my 90-day um, hormone solution program, which they do get one-to-one consultations with me, but they're also supported through a women's health program. So I don't have to 
say the same thing over and over again. So I think whatever business you're in, whether you want your education program to be your whole business or whether you want it to support your consultations, it is, it adds so much more value to the client and it cuts down the amount of work that you have to do because you're not having to repeat yourself. You will find that the the information you can put in a program is the same information that you're always getting asked. And so why not? And then if you are getting booked out or if you've got a lot of clients, bring them into a, a group environment, build that community, take them through whatever you're offering through mm-hmm. an online program. Yeah. And continually review and Mm-hmm. every all those comments people put in there or you know the feedback you get or you know the questions you keep getting asked and so forth because that helps you build up those assets and respect yes. to the program you're building as well and, and obviously you know you're that's building it for them so listening to what they have to say that's the biggest part of it isn't it listening to what your oh, community is asking so important because if you want longevity in that business you have to be honoring what people are wanting and if you you know your biggest asset is your clients because they're the one that's going to share their results they're the one that is going to share their experience with you and so if you can keep honoring that um that path for them then you're going to be talked about in the best way possible and people are going to come to you yeah and is that one of the reasons why like you mentioned before that you also do business coaching um as well so is that one of the reasons why you introduce that into your business as well or yeah so with you know a lot of the time you do a certification program and some sort of health modality and then they're like okay see you and you're like okay how so do I apply this <laughs> now now what like how do I apply it mm. and because I teach a very unique method so we're teaching um our students how to take this Ayurvedic wisdom and integrate it with their existing knowledge and tools and frameworks so that they right. can build their own methodology, which Mm -hmm. gives them a point of difference in the coaching space. Yes. And and so I thought that was really important to add. And it's attracted a lot of students because they're like, I really liked your program because you also offered that business mentorship. So we do that within the program, but I also do private um, clinical and business mentorship for women in the health and wellness space who want to um, be able to also create their own method and put it into practice. Awesome. That's a huge point of difference. Mm. compared to a lot of other, you know, programs out there. (laughs) Yes, it's very holistic. It is, very. Um, Now I'd love to ask, uh, you know, I always ask my, you know, guests this question and that is what legacy are you looking to leave? This, the Ayurved Alchemist is my legacy, that, and my, actually my podcast, my husband always says, I love that you're leaving a legacy because even when you're gone, your podcasts are always going to be out there for everyone to hear. I was like, thank (laughs) you, great. And, and I guess my biggest, other biggest legacy would be my children, my twins. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. And do you have an offer that you'd like to share with our audience today? Yeah, absolutely. So I have a free Ayurveda Foundations of Ayurveda course. So it is a little mini course that takes you through um, a video series um, talking all about the foundations of Ayurveda from the elements to the doshas to Ayurvedic psychology to nutrition. And I would love to offer that to your um, your listeners and you can, I'll give you the link for it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, no, we'll get all of that information. Not <laughs> to worry yeah. at all <laughs> no. because I was like harmonyinspiredhealth.com.au is my website yep but I actually need to get it up on my website okay. <laughs> as like an don't, <laughs> don't worry <laughs> harmony's offer will be in our podcast summary everyone yeah. <laughs> yeah. you can find it on my instagram though like my link tree dropbox oh. so I'm like hang a minute it's actually not on my website I better <laughs> get on <off> that <laughs> Got to get onto that south side of things, don't you? Yes. <laughs> this is the life, isn't it? It's like, oh, God, hang on, I've got to do a link here, a link there. Yeah. That every day, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, Harmony, you've been amazing to chat to today. Thank you so much for your time. You're absolutely beautiful. Okay. And, you know, even though this isn't video, it's just audio, you know, the smile and the vibrance of Harmony is absolutely amazing. Again, Harmony, thank you so much for your time. All of Harmony's details and her offer will be in our podcast summary below. Be sure to click on the link and don't forget to subscribe to the Wise Dome podcast. Thanks again, Harmony, for your time. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the Wise Dome podcast. If you enjoyed and have been inspired by this episode and you'd like to support the podcast, 
do subscribe and please share it with others. Post about us on social media or leave a rating and review. To catch all the latest from me, Nikki Kelly, you can follow me on Instagram at Wise Dome Podcast, W-I-S-E-D-O-M-E Podcast. I'm Nikki Kelly. Thanks again and we'll catch up next time. Bye.